like we are live welcome 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 greetings and welcome to heal talk real talk with lisa it's good to be here with you isn't it wow we have a special guest today i am so honored and happy to have annie hardock from Canada here with us. We're going to be talking about things that are informative, integrative, and why not? Let's make it fun, right? So with further ado, instead of me doing the formal uh, introductions and everything, I'm going to ask Annie to uh, introduce herself and share a little bit about you. Annie, welcome to Heal Talk, a Real Talk with Lisa. Thank you, Lisa. Uh, I was so happy that I came across you like uh, just over a month ago at Network of Influence, right? Um, and and With our friend Manny Lopez. <laughs> <laughs> we have laughed about it because the first thing I got into this uh, virtual networking platform, I was sitting at your table. I know. <laughs> Remember? I, yes, okay, that, that's how I met. You were the first one in that first Aww. thing. And then over that event, we came across each other two more times. I and know. I, said, I need to meet this person. There were like over like 80, like close to 100 people. But exactly. But what's the chance that I keep bumping into mm. you? And we were doing virtual bump. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And I'm actually from Canada, Ontario. And I've been living in Canada since uh, the 1980. I came here uh, from Hong Kong as a foreign student. Oh, and, okay. Yes, uh, that's how I started. And then, um, and then later I got married and stay in this country. <laughs> Wonderful. So yeah. you married? Married in, uh, in Canada, and I know that uh, life took a turn, and after your divorce, you've been a single parent with uh, a son that you raised single-handedly, and I know so many women can relate to that, but how did you change, uh, how did you shift your mindset, reset, uh, you were in the computers, and what you are doing today, which we're going to be talking more of, share a little bit about that. Yes, um, I actually graduated from university in uh, the mathematic uh, faculty and okay. on computer science. And that was my uh, interest since I was a uh, little, I just love math, right? Mm. Um, and, and right off from university, I was working in the financial industry and applying my um, technical skills in that area in system development. And, but it didn't last for very long. It's, a, it's just about five years and I had it. I just thought technology keep changing all the time and being work and just uh, uh, staying in one department of a big financial institution, that's not for me because I'm the type that wants to continue to learn and grow, right? Um, whether it's in, uh, as a person to grow continuously and also knowledge, I keep on learning um, new knowledge. And so I started my own system consulting company. That's how brave I was. Five years experience all from the university. Wow, okay. Consulting company. And then after about uh, seven years, then I still find that's not enough, like give me that satisfaction. So I became more like jumped into real entrepreneurial journey, right? And started my own internet-based um, business, helping other small businesses. Um, to uh, find out this online platform. And it, that was in 1996. I don't know whether you remember, Lisa, like back then it was like a dial-up internet access, remember? Oh my God, yes. Yes, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Thing work. So when we build things, it has to be like just text. Don't forget about graphics because there's not enough um, speed. Got it. Yeah, right? I remember uh, when I used to be a paralegal, the computers were like DOS. <laughs> We're okay, ancient. So, <laughs> yeah, because I actually talked to someone that's uh, just, uh, like, you know, a teenager, and I have to explain to her what, like, a modem, a dial-up, you know, to get to the internet. Exactly. You can't relate to that, right? But um, that's how it was. Like, actually, um, my son was four years old when uh, my 18 years relationship broke down, like, when my marriage ended. But 
at that time, I still have that dream of being an entrepreneur. So I refused that temptation of going back to a corporate job, which gave me the security, the stability um, to raise my son. But I chose to be an entrepreneur. Mm, which is not an easy task. <laughs> no. For those who are entrepreneurs or have their own businesses and everything. Oh my God. A lot of people think that we have the time of the day to do whatever we want. I think we work as hard, if not harder than people who go to work. Yes. But in a company organization. But, but the important thing is we love what we do. Otherwise we won't last, right? As an entrepreneur, you know how Amen. much time we put it in, but it has to be from within us that we right. want, it, right? Otherwise, you just get a job. That's why I say if you don't want to think that entrepreneur just like have that freedom and money and the time and you don't put, have to put that effort, then I think that maybe a job would be uh, better, right? You get a paycheck every month. And <laughs> exactly. Yes. So, you know, um, Annie, you brought up something very important. You said since you were a kid, you were very good in mathematics and uh, that math was your forte. Uh, there are a lot of children who um, mathematics is not their strong point. And I think uh, my question to you is how do we hone that skill or any skill? But right now today, I wanted to ask you, is that something like it's a God-given gift because a few days ago, I posted a, uh, a video of the six-year-old who was playing the piano as if being in a concerto, and he's only six years old. And one of my viewers and friends text, uh, messaged me and said, great video, it must be Asian. So is this like an Asian thing, or is this a genetic thing? <laughs> And I don't mean to be segregating. It's just, uh, what is the mindset? We talk about mindset reset. So yes. share with us. Yeah. I think some kids, they do like born with that uh, talent, but mm -hmm. without the nurturing after they were born, they're not going to get where they end. Like this, the example of what you see, that six-year-old boy, right? right? Even though he might be born with that certain uh, talent, right? In, um, so uh, what I believe that each of us were born with that potential. Mm. Something everyone has that um, potential to do something really good, but lots of them, we don't have that discipline to nurture that, right? Or even seeing the gift. We always see other people's gifts, just like uh, under the Christmas tree. Someone else's gift is always better than yours. I don't know. Oh, yes. Right? The grass is always greener at the other side. And I tell everyone the grass is only right. green where we water it. As we didn't think of opening our gifts first, but our eyes looking at somewhere else. <laughs> right? Open the gift. Right. Right? So, so what I see with um, uh, children, like, like you, you said, like I was especially really interested in math. Like, do you know why? Because I was born and raised in Hong Kong. It was like very competitive environment, even going, mm. getting into a good um, kindergarten school. Like back then, it, it's like, we have to do a, a test, an exam. <laughs> from kindergarten time. Yeah, from kindergarten. I remembered that. I just remember that I was sitting in that class classroom and they say because my last name they also be like alphabetical order my god my maiden name was like start with a y <laughs> with alphabetical order i would be the last one <laughs> to go through okay. years after that. but i remember clearly in that kindergarten exam whatever test they say well because they let those kids that cry go first so i did because I thought, otherwise, I'm waiting till forever. <laughs> the why? <laughs> in so alphabet. you found a way to get ahead. To get ahead. <laughs> I, I, I just, um, but about the math, it's, 
Um, one thing is about exam. Like I just find with doing any uh, uh, math exam, it's easy for me. It's like I would go to bed as long as I uh, have good enough rest the night before, I will do well in a math test because it's all analytical. Like you just, once you understand the logic, then you just solve the problem, right? But versus like history or, or something like literature, that's something that I have to remember, memorize. I was no good in that. Like, well, I, I would have to keep, like the night before, I keep like trying to like, yo, I want it to stay until I finish the test. Okay, I need to get them into my brain. You know, that, that, that's myself. That, that's just, I have that uh, issue of- uh, Okay, like, so it's formulas. Not necessarily remember, like actually when, once you understand the logic, the formula is easy to remember, right? Okay. Yes, but the foundation, what I find uh, it just by accident, it was like years later, years later, it's just like when I have my son um, in kindergarten, right? And initially I just put him in um, uh, like learning the language uh, because I'm uh, like Chinese, like learning the uh, Cantonese language. And then by accident, like he wasn't really interested in that. And then, but, and I found by accident, this program, it's an abacus program. And they actually teach young children on this. But I just thought, oh, my son was drawn to it. Why not put him in that, right? That's my first encounter of this method of doing the, building the foundation skills of math for young children. And I find it beneficial and uh, so much that I believe in it, that by the time my son was grade 10, him and I, we started a learning center and help in teaching young children to develop that skills because math doesn't have to be that hard, especially the foundation skills. Okay. Adding, subtracting, multiplication, division. So we want to build that strong foundation for um, children. And, and <clears throat> Let me say, I remember growing up, my grandfather used to have uh, what she, what he used to call it is salamas. And it was a board like this and he would do the numbers and he would, I think it was like, That's in right. the old ancient ways, they used to do the trading and keep score and do the accounting and everything like that. And in where I grew up in Iran, uh, the, the classes were very competitive, but I remember our multiplication that we had to do like two times two is four. Everything was in like what we call the Excel uh, okay. formula, right, in a, gr uh, in a grin. Mm -hmm. um, in a grid, thank you. And that's how I memorize it. Even to this day, if I want to do any multiplication, I do it in Farsi and then translate it in English or in Armenian because that's how I learn. So the basic is so similar. And please tell us about this because I was reading, it is like 2,500 years old, and there is two many different versions. There's one that it was Greek, and there's one that says it's a Chinese. So share with us about not only the system, but how is it that children, by learning this method, they advance much faster? Yes, so here, I'm not sure the one that you have seen in Iran, it's, this type with the beads, right? I can't remember, but I remember him. But basically an abacus with the frame and there's the beam and all these columns, right? Okay. But when we use it, it actually lying flat. But right now, if I lie flat, you can't really see it, right? So when we use it, actually all the beads are away from the beam. But this one that I show you, you'll notice that there are two beads on the top and five beads at the bottom. This is the Chinese traditional abacus, mm. right? Okay. That, that's the first time I encountered like a, an abacus was a um, long time ago, 50, more than 50 years ago. <laughs> All right. My parents um, actually uh, run a, a restaurant 
And at that time, they this was their tool to do wow. calculations, right, at the cashier. Okay. Um, well, I kind of just learning the very basic of uh, how to just add numbers because I was just kindergarten when they had the restaurant. And I actually had to wait for them, the restaurant to close before I get to go to bed like or like go home. Um, so someone taught me a game on the abacus. So basically just adding numbers, right? So I, I, I was just in kindergarten age, but because of the sound, you can hear back then those were wood. They are really stimulating. When you click them fast, it, it's a hearing, right? I, I will tell you later how our program is like stimulating the senses. One part is about um, the beats movement and also fine motor skills. The children that you, this is the old one, but this is the one that we use for children. See, the beats are a lot smaller. So it required a lot of fine motor skills. And also you notice there's only one beat at the top and four at the bottom. This is what the, um, can you I can't see very well. Okay. Oh, sorry. Okay. There. Yeah. All right. So you, you see, wow. normally the beats are uh, on the top, but because we normally use it uh, flying flat, right? But because we, um, I'm doing the demonstration, that's why right. um, that way. So the, um, <clears throat> the abacus, this is uh, in Japanese, it's called Soloban. Um, but there are many different countries still like have an after school program teaching children this method, how to use an abacus, right? There's international competition that um, there's actually last year was held in, um, in Thailand with uh, 500 students and over 24 countries, right? Wow. Participate. So the method is still there, like, but we don't just teach children how to use the abacus, but because the method we teach, train them to do the mental math is based on the abacus method. So once they learn how to uh, do calculations on the actual abacus, we train them to visualize, visualize the beats movement, right? So you know, like if, if, if people like do meditation, they know how, what a visualization means. You have that picture, right? So we actually almost like, having a movie, like a, a video, having the beats just moving and then the calculation is done. And you know, if people like, can move the beats really fast, in their mind, it can be even faster, right? Okay. And, and that's how they do the calculation. And, and that's a, a pictorial like form, of, like it, I don't know whether you read music or not. Yes, so I you, used to play the piano. Yes, so you see the music note, Versus seeing, okay, that's a note of C. Like if you write down what the notes meaning, if you just look at the, uh, uh, it's a C, that's an E, that's a G. It doesn't right. really mean anything. It doesn't translate onto the uh, music keyboard, right? But if you look at the notes, the position of where the stop, like where you the can note, come up with the sound. Oh yeah, you can. You already know where it is on the keyboard, right? Okay. You, you translate like really fast. So similar, like with. with um, uh, this method is instead of seeing numbers, if I tell you like 37 plus 64 minus 23, what do you see in your mind when you try? I, well, I, well <laughs> I'd say it really fast, but the numbers, normally what people see as an adult, like that's not trained in this way, they would see numbers in their head. If I say Correct. 64, they would see a six and see a four. It doesn't really mean anything. But versus on the abacus, so there's a certain position that represented number six and a number four, like 64, right? So all you see is just that pattern on the abacus when they say 64, that's what the kids say. And then when you uh, compute like uh, the other numbers that what you do is just moving the beads. So it's beat movement. So by moving the beads, it's like, just like anything else in life, how we, uh, how formulate a behavior is like uh, first it's the thought and then it's uh, repeating and after repeating it so many times it becomes embedded and becomes a habit and after continuing that habit uh, re repetition repetition it gets embedded in our subconscious mind which becomes a part of our behavior and that is so subconscious that all they do is move and so yes. this is not, this is incredible because now that you showed it to me, what you're saying is it's a formula plus it, 
uh, it works with so many of our senses, which is the sound, the mm -hmm. touch, and our thought process. So it's left brain and right brain working at the same time. It becomes a game as much as how they touch it and feel it. The sound is connected and their left brain is working, which is the logic and everything. This is absolutely amazing. Lisa, I wish all the parents just like you, you just got it. You just nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> I spent so much time trying to explain to parents, right? Because parents don't, uh, like lots of uh, them don't really understand this method. I, I said exactly what I say, but you just got it. Boom. <laughs> Yes, it's about the subconscious mind. Once, like, just like learning a bicycle or even drive, driving a shift, like, you know, uh, exactly. car, right? Like, right, once right, you right. learn right. it and you repeat doing it and it's in, like, in your brain and you just start doing it and see how quickly you do it without thinking, right? I remember going into a, a, a test drive a car and I haven't been driving, like, for four years, like, for a uh, 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 a standard car, right? I said, oh, I think I want to try a standard car. I couldn't what do you mean a standard car versus like a with stick shift? shift? Yeah, with the stick okay. shift. The standard, that's what it's called, a standard car, instead okay. of an automatic <laughs> car. All right. I, I haven't been driven like for four years with this uh, shift. But I got into the car. I can't, don't ask me what the step is to do the stick shift. I just knew, like, the, it started just like, you know. The, of the, course, the, it's natural. <laughs> it's a natural process. Once you know it, you know it. Yes. So so it's the same with the uh, the math. If we can have help kids to see it in other way, right? And there is a, a training formula to do it. And I've been training this method for, like, teaching children for 10 years with this method. And my son was in this when uh, he was six years old, it was like year 2000. That's how long ago. And I see the benefits of what my son um, uh, now um, has is because he, what he, um, well, he, he graduated from university about um, two years ago already. Okay, wow. He was able to um, create his own business and make money, like even during the, um, uh, the time at university. But Lots of things that he do, it's uh, like on the numbers. I just thought, uh, like, what is that? Like, he just do it like so quick because it's the speed, right? The response speed. Like, there, there's um, when others people see it, they thought they're genius. Like, like you know, those kids that train that way, but it's not. They're trained because, uh, uh, yeah, because when he was okay. trained, I didn't know until I went to see his other classmate, like in Abacus. I thought, oh, they can all do that. It's not like my son is super special. Well, I think it, it, everyone is super special and unique. It's just how we are trained. It's like, uh, I can create and create and create, just like Manny says, it's like you're wonderful in creation, but when it comes to implementing, um, there is this scare, fear base. It's like, is it going to be good? Is it going to be that? But once we know it and we've done it so many times, it becomes a part of a, it's like a natural process. Uh, but everything in life is practice. The same as I call that six-year-old kid a prodigy, because I also believe that maybe when he was in his mom's womb, maybe the mom is a uh, concert pianist and he heard the notes. He was embedded with music. He was surrounded with that music. And yes, uh, an, an innate God-given talent also helps. So do you, right now you have classes. I'm sure with this COVID and everything, you're in-house classes have turned on to an online. Can someone still learn by doing Zoom and online training how this abacus works? Do Can you also teach children from across from Canada to America if the children in our community and people who are watching right here, especially parents, uh, can they learn and take classes from you? Yes. And uh, to me, I was fortunate in the unfortunate situation of COVID-19 mm -hmm. 
that I was able to find a virtual classroom, first of all. Wow. It's the demo which Manny used like uh, for his networking event. Yes, yes because I find the uh, functionality was really good for doing group lessons and also one-on-one -on -one individual um, sessions. Wonderful. And for our program, we always have the uh, uh, have invested in technology. So the technology of like online uh, based um, uh, online system with a digital abacus, digital, digital, doesn't uh -huh. it? Yes, it has been available for at least 10 years, okay. right? But, but now, uh, three years ago, it's, um, it, it was available for me to able to deliver not in just our physical location. I was able to deliver it at a private school after school program. So it's been working well, like mm. smart board and they have iPad for all the kids. So we have tested that for three years. So that online system worked because there's also the uh, teacher background. So what happened is- But they're not touching it. it. No, no, no. They also have the physical tool. They oh, have okay. the physical tool. Yes, yes. But during the COVID-19, I only tested it with existing students who already have the abacus, but okay. also have the um, online system. What we were able to do is having them share the screen. Actually, I can have uh, multiple students sharing their screen, doing our online system and wow. watching them. Right? And also because of the back end, we see all the um, questions, the, the answers that they put in. So we know what they are struggling with. Wow. So say if there's someone is struggling with the um, multiplication and I will go one-on-one -on -one and have them like pull it up on the system and I can watch and go through the steps with them, right? This is amazing. This is like a virtual world hovering over the children right. and seeing everything. Yes, because we have the back end system that helped us to see Wow. like all the data right and then also in the front end um you know the the student they like, they have the option we can still like you know for new students mail them uh, uh the real advocates right because it, it's important to to work on the uh, fine motor skill right and then the other part that's really powerful is uh, listening training mm -hmm. i don't know whether it's speed listening like see my son is trained in that way and also all my students trained in that way that numbers being read to them. So it's like, after you say saying all those numbers, it's not just that they're hearing the question, they actually have the answer, right? Okay, you know? so it's like speed reading, it's speed listening. Speed listening. So yes. as you are saying it, they're already calculating it. This yes, is like yes. the kids, the genius kids who are on Jeopardy or any of those games. Yes, but it can be trained. So like, like because we also automate the listening process, right? So the listening can be like, for me, I like lots of people can't even hear what the question is, right? Like, because it's so fast, da, 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 all the numbers coming up and they can hear it because they were trained in that way. So it's not just basically like, it's so they're superior in math, so what, but it's the development of the child's brain. So we train them when they are still like developing lots of these, I would call that, it's like high speed. If you're comparing the high speed internet access with large volume of data passing through versus in the old days, remember we're talking about the dial up, <laughs> the right, mobile, right, right. very little amount of information can go through, right? And also the dense, density of that network. We want to build that, help children to build that and they will benefit for life. Okay. That's so, so it's helping them expand their mind. Building the network connections. Okay. Yes. Okay. During Allow me to ask you a question. Let's mm -hmm. say uh, one of our uh, parents turns around and says um, that my child is not very good at math. Is this a skill that can help the child going from a D to a B, if not an A? And at they, what age is the best time to help children? I mean, uh, can teenagers start developing this method and become better in mathematics? So uh, you have multiple questions in there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fast in my questions. <laughs> yes. So, so we like, because we have to understand that it like the, the children, like the brain development, you know, the um, early childhood education, because they know at, there are 
time, the critical age, when they say language or, uh, you know, and uh, uh, other uh, cognitive skills, right? It, there is a, an age uh, time. Yeah, and from so one to seven, seven is the developing part. From seven to nine is the high, high performance time. Yes. So, so for us, the ideal age is six years old. But mm. we do start with four years old um, uh, children, just um, because some of the children like they get developed like faster than the others. So four and five years old, some of them are really uh, uh, well in that. But when you talked about children that is not good in math, this is actually maybe a better method for them to learn mm. because this is visual, right? You, it's the, visual and it, auditory. Do it. Yes, it's different um, than the uh, method they come across like at, at school. But children that train this way, they can also learn from uh, like the, the method they teach at school because it helped them with their learning um, uh, skill. The, the motor uh, skills. rate of learning, right? Like it, it's your mind has to be open, really ready to absorb those information. Right. The more you work on, uh, like you know, the mind work, the sharper you are with any subject. Just about like yeah. focusing, because focus is one of the uh, part of our training that's very important, and increase their memory capacity. Mm -hmm. Like you notice, like I, we used to be able to remember people's number, <laughs> right? Yes. Like you call a friend, we just dial the number, and they're your friend. Yeah, exactly. you don't use that part. It's like, oh, really difficult. I, find Actually, really I think this has dumbed us down so much more than anything else. Yes, because we didn't have to memorize, right? So then you find it's not just remembering remembering phone number, but lots of other uh, things that we do that requires some sort of like uh, memory skills that require, right? right. So I see this method, it gives improvement to any kids from all spectrum. And important, what I see is like, uh, especially in the uh, speed listening training, I just find lots of kids that have difficulty um, focusing. I mm. see especially those kids have big improvement. Beautiful. After, yeah, six to nine months, like they'll see the result, the change in the way they, um, the, they focus. Beautiful, okay. So, for all of you who are watching, um, if you have any young kids and they are struggling with, or if you want them to become better, not necessarily struggling, mm -hmm. but you want your children to become better. And I think this is something that even seniors can start because of uh, sharpening their mind, sharpening their focus. Seniors can start doing something like this, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, we did um, help some of the seniors with this uh, uh, method and they find it, it's not just entertaining. Some of them, like, you know, they find actually it helped them. It remind them, right. even just reminding them, like, you know, about these numbers and then learning new skills. See, it, when we start learning something new and repeat that process, we actually build new pathways. So it's not like when we're old, it's like we're hopeless and we're not building anything new. But we're like I myself, I think I would be hopeless if I don't continue to learn to grow, right? Yes. yes. Um, okay. yes we do want to help uh, anyone who wants to benefit from this program. It is in my heart now that we can actually deliver this service online anywhere around the world. And I That's want amazing. I that want is amazing because right now I was going to ask you. Do schools in Canada offer this as a, uh, a, a method in the school system? In Well, well uh, yes, it's uh, quite difficult, but we had very good uh, luck in approaching a uh, private school and as an after school. school program. Yes, as an after school program, right. Um, <clears throat> Um, I, it, it just in my heart about, um, I, I see the benefit of it and how we, even as adults, we want to awaken our mind, our genius within our potential, right? To yes. live the life, the quality of life. Actually, when I help the seniors, I actually is about the quality of life. It's keeping their cognitive, right? And right. help with the memory. That's what I, I find now. It's like, 
Yeah, the sky is the limit. Exactly. So in a way, it's like the way I work with my clients when they come in with an issue or a problem or something like that. I usually say, you know what, let's uh, tap into your subconscious because that's that's the foundation. That's the platform, whatever it is that the habits and the behaviors that we have uh, established. It comes from we go to the root cause and shift it, edit it, and then move forward so this in a way uh is absolutely imperative for all of us to learn so that we can expand our mindset and what we what is it that you and i always talk about mindset (laughs) reset right (laughs) yes and and what i read is also like there's um someone saying like with the conscious mind it process about two thousand bits per second of data. But mm-hmm. with the conscious mind, non-conscious mind is actually 400 billion bits per second. So it's like, if we can utilize that part of mm-hmm. our conscious mind, everything can be used. Sometimes like we just find we're thinking too much because using the conscious mind sometimes is just overthinking and we not allowing the information to just get yeah, it just a, Absorbed. That's why young well, this conscious mind of ours, it's absolutely <laughs> amazing because it's the logic and thinking and analyzing and judging and criticizing, but it also blocks so much of our creative side, which is the gifts inside. Yes, that's what this method is actually with that logical analyzing all the steps, the sequence, and then move all those information over to process it and it's a lot faster. That's why the response time, that's what people see these mm. child. How come they do like these, wow. Uh, <laughs> Amazing <laughs> thing. Publish it so quickly, right? There's no. Well, it's been a pleasure. Annie, I would like you to share where they can find you. And by the way, I would like to ask you a question. Do you, uh, is there something, a gift that you can give our audience? Uh, something that if anyone is interested, how they can, and I know you said you have a gift and oh my God, it, it warms my heart that you are willing to gift something to one of our audiences. And how do we do this? How do we select an audience, one of no, our audience members? Thing. No, 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 not just one. <gasps> I'm opening up. A free trial lesson, one hour free trial lesson. For anyone, and how do they get in touch with you? We're on Facebook, right? And you tagged me, just sent it to me. Annie Hardock on Facebook, right? We're on Facebook Live. So everyone has the access on Facebook. Yes. Oh my God. And this you is want amazing. It. This is right. like super amazing. People, my folks. Do you realize you are being gifted this amazing tool for your children, for your teenagers, even seniors? It doesn't matter. Yes. So contact me. I have reserved a a time like for this Saturday, if anyone interested. It's uh, one o'clock at uh, Pacific time or, yes, right. So four (laughs) o'clock Eastern time. Yes, for now, I, I welcome you. So like, all we have to do is be in touch with you, message you or tag you and say, I am interested in being on that one hour yes. study. Fine. Perfect. Yes. Yeah. And or I will put like, your links and everything yeah. in here. Yes. I, I always say when people interview me, I always say my email address actually is really easy to remember. So. Sure. Annie, A-N-N-I-E, that's my name. Mm-hmm. And the town I'm living in is called Uxbridge, U-X-B-R-I-D-G-E. So my email address is actually Annie at Uxbridge.com. So they know Perfect. Annie at Uxbridge.com. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, your information will be right here for anyone who's interested to be in touch with you. So with further ado, I want to thank you for being on Real Talk, Heal Talk. And I have one more question for you. Please yes. complete the sentence. Ready? Whoa, okay. Mm. Um. Annie is? 
Oh, Annie. Annie is a spiritual being. <laughs> it's a spiritual being and I want to share to everyone in this world. That is beautiful. That is beautiful. Well, thank you. I am so happy we have met and our hat off to our um, our spirit leader, Manny Lopez, who brought us together. But yes. other than that, I wish you all the best, especially that you're in Canada. I know I will not come and visit you because you're on that northern part. That is the cold <laughs> part. And I cannot handle cold. So you have to come to Los Angeles. <laughs> it's beautiful here right now is it yes okay yes yes, yes. we do have summer here spring and summer <laughs> it's like winter all the time it was crazy like uh oh it's snow i think at the beginning of this month <laughs> beautiful thank you so much for being here this was absolutely amazing and for all of you uh, my viewers my listeners you want to be in touch with Annie, I will have all the information there. This Saturday, uh, you can go and be gifted. Until mm -hmm. further ado, I will see you next week. God bless you and may the universal light be with you. Thank you. Bye-bye.